can you imagine your life without a credit card? Like just literally not using your credit card? That is what my next guest did in order to get a handle on her finances and buy a home. Lisa Somalonis went on a credit card fast, a credit card fast to help her get out of debt and buy her home. She joins us now to talk about her journey and share some tips on how you could do it too. Lisa is in Blackwood, New Jersey. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. How are you today? I am great. Uh, first of all, tell us a bit about your life prior to this fast. What was going on for you? Sure. So I had been married for about 13 years. And um, as many couples do, we got into debt and uh, it was a financial strain for us. Um, there was a variety of factors, but uh, our marriage ended. And I decided that um, I wanted a different life for myself and wanted to make a fresh start. And so when, once we um, got divorced and sold our house, we um, cleared out all the debt that we had. And I kind of vowed to myself that I didn't want to ever get to that place again. And I also didn't quite trust myself in the beginning to make good choices. Where did the idea come from to do a credit card fast? I mean, millions of people want to get a handle on their credit card spending. Not millions of people would choose that approach. Sure. So uh, I guess from our previous experience of kind of running up some of our um, credit, uh, I was, like I said, not really trusting myself. So I felt like I wanted to go back to the basics. And um, just to be fully transparent, I read a lot of different personal finance things, um, different philosophies. And, you know, I didn't agree with all of them, but I took out um, from each one things that worked for me. And one of those things was limiting credit cards well, you know, they're not evil, but for me, I felt that it was a good thing for me to do this fast or take a break from it because then I could look at um, what I was spending in real time and I felt like I had more control. If I didn't have the cash and I didn't have it in my debit account, I just couldn't use it. So how did this work? Did you did you cancel the cards or did you freeze them in a block of ice? What no, did you do? No, none of those things. Although I've read about people who've done all of those things. And for yeah. me, I just really, it was a mental decision. You know, you're, you made these mistakes before you don't want to make them again. Let's not use them unless it's like really, really dire. And so, um, you know, I just had an awareness of what was coming in, what I knew I needed to spend for bills. And then the irregular expenses is sometimes what trips people up and you feel like, oh, I don't have this money, so I have to put it on my credit card. So I tried to really start looking at everything in real time and then planning ahead if I knew something mm -hmm. was coming, like say a quarterly bill. What were some of the challenges that you had to overcome either practically like you know some expenses come and you got no option or uh emotionally habits that you had to unwind for yourself or i don't know a lot of people have a sense of um entitlement seems like a big word i don't mean entitlement but that they feel like they deserve to have presents to wrap for the kids on the holidays those sure oh absolutely and those are the kinds of things that i would plan for i also um reached out to like, uh, I had a good support system. So sometimes if there were things like say for Christmas that we wanted, maybe um, I, and people would ask me, what should I get the kids? I would tell them. And sometimes it was practical things like, you know, we need new sneakers for cross country or, or things like that. Um, but I think I tried to get into a gratefulness state of mind. Like I, I do have a lot of blessings in my life. Mm -hmm. So we focused on that. We had our basic needs met. And then when things came up, we just tried to like almost became like a game. Like, how can we do this? One thing was a small thing, but eating out, like, I, you know, especially as a single parent, sometimes you run out of time, mm -hmm. you haven't planned for a meal or something like that. And like when the kids were small, we would go to fast food a lot. And mm -hmm. like that would rack up after a while. And so we started to do like breakfast for dinner because that was easy for me and quick and, and cheap. And, um, and it could be fun, you know, sometimes. So like, that was just like a little, little thing. Um, but yeah, so just trying to be disciplined. Also, I needed to make some more money. Like mm -hmm. when you look at everything and you see what is what your income is coming in and what is going out, sometimes you realize, um, you know, I have to do something else. Now, luckily for me, I could always be a free. I'm a freelance writer, so I could do some freelance writing and editing, and that helped. Although you have to wait to get paid. You don't, you know, you do the work, you don't get paid the next day. So again, it's more planning. How hard a trade off was that for you to make uh, to? 
I assume, sacrifice time and energy for your self-care, for your kids in order to say, no, I actually need to take on other assignments in order to make the finances work. Right. So it, it did give me a sense of control, though, that I was, you know, like I, I had made this commitment to myself and that I could I felt lucky that I could actually make some more money. Um, but you're right. It is a time constraint. Sometimes I did it after the kids went to bed or on the weekends, maybe, um, you know, when they weren't here at a, in an activity. Um, but it, it, it worked out. And also when you do the side hustle or the freelance, you kind of can control what you take on. Mm -hmm. So that that's also important. You, you write about giving yourself some grace. Yes. What did that mean for you? For me, that was a big part of it. Um, I'm a high achiever. Uh, um, uh, I call myself a reformed perfectionist. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I made some mistakes. We made some mistakes when we were married. I made some mistakes on my own. And um, I so sometimes would be self-critical. And, you know, that doesn't really help. We all make mistakes, we make missteps. And if we're self-critical, that just kind of is a negative energy. And I wanted to put my energy into something positive going forward. So I tried to think about what I wanted my life to be. And then from there, you know, um, made some positive steps towards that. Uh, okay. Our listeners will, um... I'm going to oversimplify here, but they'll have one of two reactions to mm -hmm. the choice that you made and to your story. One may be, I'm inspired. I could do it too. The other could be, I could never do that. Mm -hmm. To that second group, what would you say? Well, I think I would say that this is not a permanent state. You, uh, you know, I did not cancel any of my credit cards. Um, I wanted to preserve my credit score. Um, and I... Uh, didn't freeze them or anything like that. But I did this for a period of time, probably about three years until I felt confident that I could make my bills, uh, the payments, that I could plan ahead, that I had that discipline. And then I did go back to using credit cards. I use a zero-based budgeting app. Um, I use the, uh, you need a budget, but there is some other free options as well. I think maybe every dollar, I think it's called. Um, and so then, in, in, and also the envelope method, if people still use all cash, um, so that you can kind of, I, I trained myself, I feel like, to go back to use more responsibly. And, you know, that was just a personal choice for me. And at the end of each month, I know that I've set aside all the money that I've charged so that when the bill comes due, I can pay the entire statement balance, not just what is due. So that's a system that works for me. And I think it can work for other people. Sure. If your kids were here and I were to ask them about this time, mm -hmm. what would they say? Um, my kids are 22 and 25 now, mm -hmm. and we've had this conversation and, you know, they're very sweet and they're very proud um, that we made it work because um, as a single parent, uh, I tried to foster a team environment. So we were all on the same team. I, I don't think that they felt deprived in any way. I think, you know, some Sometimes we made choices, but I always said, this is where we're choosing to spend our money, not we can't afford it. So it was empowering. And now in their 20s, I really am an advocate for them to manage their own money. They are using the zero-based budgeting system as well with very, you know, uh, yeah, right you now know, because it's hard. Young people. Yes, and it's very hard. You know, my younger son will say to me, the only thing this budget tells me is that I don't have enough money. And then he gets angry. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that can be a motivating thing. Maybe we need to make some more money. Maybe we need to look at where we're spending um, our money. So it's been a good experience overall. Just as we wrap up, uh, in the dark days, and I know we're talking for 10 minutes, but in the, in the toughest times, the darkest days of this, especially because your context was coming out of a marriage and, you know, being on your own, right. what was the thing that kept you going, that kept, had you stay focused on this fast and stay focused on mm. getting a handle on your mind? That's a, that's a great question. I think there were a couple of things. Um, one was that I, I had a vision for what I wanted our family life to be in the future. And that was secure and peaceful. Mm -hmm. So I felt that these efforts were helping me get there. And then I kept a diet of um, just the, you know, reading all of the personal finance and blogs and, um, you know, podcasts like, like your show. And it really kind of helped me keep on track. And then finally, just thought, um, 
I'm so blessed with what I have. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that kind of just, you know, I don't need that thing because I have what I need already. So kind of like that abundance mindset. So great. Lisa, thank you for joining us today. No, oh, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. It was great to meet you. you Lisa too. Samalonis went on a credit card fast following the end of her marriage. She got her finances on track, bought a home, and I think did a pretty darn good job parenting kids in a way uh, to live with financial well-being in mind. Thanks again, Lisa. Thank you.